Today we talk bar tools. Welcome to Comment Cocktails. I'm your host, Derek Schomer. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about some bar tools. So from a basic standpoint, the, the first thing you need, if you don't have anything at all, is something to measure with. Because as I've said in prior videos, measuring is extremely important. Free pouring and just kind of making it up, not going to do it for you. So there are different types of measuring devices you can use. Some options that, in full disclosure, I own a cocktail store, so I know a little bit about this stuff. Um, so I can kind of talk a little bit towards it, but I also um, am motivated for you guys to go to awesomedrinks.com and buy stuff. Um, this is a three ounce measuring glass. I like these. Uh, one of the cool benefits to it is it has the pouring on the each side. It kind of looks more like a lab. Um, and it goes up to three ounces, which is neat if, if you're making some bigger cocktails. Some of the, the incremental measures are easier to do in teaspoons. If you have a hard time memorizing teaspoons to ounce, it's really not hard, but it bothers me sometimes. It doesn't work for every single measure. You can use the Easy Step Cocktail Jigger. We've used this for years. This one has step sizes between a half ounce all the way up to two ounces with increments in between. Um, if you look at our basic bar kit on Awesome Drinks, that's what it comes with. Uh, the OXO is the glass that I know Curtis McMillan, one of the co-hosts of the show, relies on for everything, uses them when he used to uh, manage bars, and this is what everybody used. It goes up to two ounces, but it has tablespoons on one side and an ounce on the other. Uh, they don't take too well to excessive washing, so they will kind of burn down over the life of them. These ones are probably eight years old, so you've got time. The one I've started to really enjoy is the Japanese Jigger. It looks like this. Uh, this one goes on it's got two ounces here with minor increments inside that you can measure to, and one ounce here with minor increments inside. I like this one because I could just use this. Totally. This is everything I need. doesn't do a quarter of an ounce, but my bar spoon does. So this is really all I need. So if you're looking for one single hit, uh, the Japanese Jigger is also accurate and, and affordable, and it's a single item. You also want some sort of shaker. I don't really enjoy cobbler sh shakers, the three-piece shakers that have the two pieces in the top that goes on top. Here's a small cobbler shaker. So this one I, I got from the folks at Cool Swan. It's three pieces. You put one side in here, you put one side in here, you put the top on. It's got the strainer built in so you don't have to buy an extra strainer. The problem is when they get super cold, they're almost impossible to take apart. So if you need one cocktail, you're good. Then you need to run it under hot water or whatever to kind of get it to separate and that's a pain in the ass. So I don't like to use the three piece cobblers but it is an available option and they're typically cheaper than everything else. While a Bossa shaker isn't that expensive, it does tend to intimidate people and kind of freak them out a little bit. Uh, you take a glass pint you probably have at home and a shaker tin. If you were to buy them not from me, I don't know if I just sell tins by themselves yet, but um, most of the time you'll see these for like uh, under 10 bucks and it'll just be the tin. You want to make sure if you don't have a glass available that you buy one that has both parts. Connect them together and you shake. Now, the thing is when you're shaking this, you're going to need to strain it. So you'll also need the additional strainer. So if you don't mind spending a couple more dollars, uh, you get yourself the full kit. Now, if you want to be able to chill it a little bit faster, glass absorbs some of the cold. So this gets cold before your cocktail does. Uh, if you use tin, this gets cold really fast, doesn't pull as much of the cold out of your drink. So it's going to give you a little bit more uh, chill factor, but not necessarily enough to make a huge difference. One of the things that I've done with our glassware is I ship uh, with the glass pairing a glass that's been tempered because if you don't have a tempered glass and you're shaking cold water and then you're putting it under heat, like hot water to clean it out, and you do that over and over, microfragmentations in your glass could cause it to shatter, or one time when you hit it, it can crack because the glass is in tempered. So you actually do want to spend a little bit more money on your glass and get a tempered glass as opposed to just using any off the shelf pint. Now for bonus points, if you don't like to get your hands cold, they also have vinyl coated shakers. Same pr principle, same concept. It just doesn't get your hands as cold, but it still stays cold inside. Boom! Not a huge fan of the vinyl ones. I don't really know why. I just I don't know, I like these ones better. The other thing you're going to want is a bar spoon. You could use a spoon in your house if that's all you have, but having a nice long spoon often makes it easier when you have to get down into the drink and spin it. If you want to stir it, what you're probably supposed to do is properly stir it from the back, but either way is going to work. This is also good if you have, these are our professional bar spoons that I sell at Awesome Drinks. We also sell just the red tip ones that you can get. These I know measure out to a quarter of an ounce or something like that, so um, it's usually pretty good if you need to get that micro measurement or dashes, splashes measurement. A muddler is also good. This gives you the ability to make your juleps and your mojitos and anything that calls for muddling, be that a, a Hendrix gin cocktail with some muddled cucumber. Um, in either case, having a muddler is handy. This is the cheap muddler. 
There's also higher end muddlers. With most bar tools, you could go from low, medium to high. And that's pretty standard. Um, as an intro person, this is gonna do everything you want. Some people are using the back of spoons. So you're already upgrading by going with the cheaper one. If you've got a little extra money, this behemoth here is definitely, it's, it's gonna, it's probably three times the cost of that, but it's gonna probably last you forever and you can kill people with it. Lastly is the julep strainer. This is kind of optional if you have a regular strainer. The julep strainer are great if you have a mixing glass, which brings you more into the advanced, either what is known as a Yari or a diamond cut or a clear cut mixing beaker. Uh, these can be double this, you could use this as well. Uh, you can use this if you don't want a mixing beaker. The mixing beaker is a little bit more voluminous, um, usually, not all of them. This is 28 ounces, uh, but when you bring ice in it, having it more flat on the bottom so you can spin the ice around without it having the concave nature where the ice stacks on top of itself is going to give you more dilution because you're going to have some ice exposed to air, chilling the air, not the drink, making it useless. The jewel strainer comes in handy here because you can hold back the ice and when you do this and you hold back that ice, you get a nice pour spout on there, everything's happy and a good time. Can you use a normal strainer? Sometimes, depends on your strainers. The ones I have and sell here fit on these multiple variants of uh, mixing beakers. However, there are some where they're going to squeeze the little fins in here, the little spring, and it might cause the spring to kind of weaken over time or get compressed over time. So a lot of bartenders will pick a julep strainer just to hold back ice. If you only have this, you could still use your cocktails and stir and strain this way. Uh, the only downfall might be if you have crushed ice or something you need to hold back, like pieces of mint, they might slide through the corners. But you know what? Live with it. Also in the basic kit that I forgot to mention is you should get yourself a lime squeeze, doubling as a lemon squeeze. Yellow doesn't mean you only need to use lemons. You can use limes. Uh, grapefruit's going to be tough. Oranges are hit and miss depending on the size of the orange. But for most things, daiquiris and, and things that require sour and you're not going to be doing freshly squeezed orange just too much, this is going to work fine. This is a Chefin lemon squeeze. Um, it's definitely more hardcore, less likely to break. You can get cheaper ones. Um, that will last a couple years. This one costs probably three times as much as a smaller one. If you get a smaller one and it'll last you three years, you did good. If you put them in the dishwasher, a lot of times with the, with the smaller ones, not so much with this one, but this pin will start to get brittle. And as you're squeezing one day, it just goes pop, and then you have no more um, squeezer. When you want to go to the advanced level, here's an orange squeezer. I like both, but I also own a store, so I have both. I also have a cocktail show, so I have both. If you only needed one of them, this one is a behemoth. It costs a lot more money. It will pretty much squeeze anything from apricots to um, key limes and do a very good job at it, but it's heavy. It's like an ax. You could go either way or just get both. One of the other things I really like that some of our hosts use and some just go freehand is having something to filter out the yolk when you're making an egg white cocktail like a Boston Sour. Being able to separate those quickly is the difference between having a, a flip and having an egg white cocktail. The last two, ice tongs. Don't use your hands in the ice when serving your friends unless they're cool with it. This is actually, I kind of find this is both on a professional and on a basic level. I don't typically provide or recommend it from a basic level, uh, but it's not too expensive and they're really cool. It's called a tea strainer. You can Google it. You can go to our store and look at them. Uh, there's different sizes. I happen to have two separate sizes that I have in the bar and in the store. For depending on what you're needing. If you're doing a drink that has a lot of additional contests, muddled strawberries with mints and blueberries and everything else, you're going to be catching a lot of stuff. The bigger one might help, but in a general use, I typically use this one because I could just strain this way. Uh, what this is going to do is keep out the mint particles. Uh, for folks that don't like ice shards in their martinis and drinks, use this. Can you get other stuff? Yes. Nice knives, lemon zesters, uh, channel knives to be able to make those twists. Most cases, you could just use a regular knife and a cutting board. Um, cutting board is another good one I'd add in there if you don't have one already. I prefer a small cutting board like this. If you had yourself a bar bag or a really nice knapsack or something like that, is knapsack still a word? Put this in there with all your bar tools. You can go to your friend's house and make yourself some drinks, and you're going to be the guy that everybody wants to talk with. All right, go buy yourself some bar tools. We're teaching you how to drink. So, to get yourself prepared for this, you're probably going to want some tonics, some club sodas for your sparkling sides, and then a little pile of citrus. And maybe a bottle of vermouth. The first cocktail to take a look at, the gin and tonic. The gin and tonic has...